in terms of the timeline, uh, what was the first glimmer to get it to this current incarnation? What Initially, it, <clears throat> let's see, I was trying to get uh, someone interested in optioning it and developing it as a film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was on the verge of agreeing to throw in with a very nice, enthusiastic young producer who hadn't done much, but he loved the book and the story, which counted for a lot for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we hadn't ironed out the terms and nothing had been signed. Mm. And then, out of nowhere, I got an uh, an email from someone or a message on Facebook or something from one of my, you mm -hmm. know, 5,000 close friends on Facebook mm -hmm. um, saying, have you read the latest issue of, and I can't remember the name of it, mm -hmm. but it was some magazine. I said, what is that? And he said, it's a British heavy metal magazine. And I said, oh, yeah, I've got a lifetime subscription to it. Why are, why are you asking me this? <laughs> You know, my tastes are to Gershwin and classic rock and Berlin. <laughs> anyway, he said there's an interview with Rob Zombie, who I knew as the man who gave us uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and The mm -hmm. Devil's Rejects. And, uh, but although Captain Spaulding mm -hmm. was, a, you know, a character in those, but not Groucho, mm -hmm. this friend of mine sends me, he mm -hmm. scans the article, mm -hmm. and it's an interview with Rob mm -hmm. where they're asking him, what is your favorite this, and favorite food, and favorite thing? Mm -hmm. And so what is your favorite book? And his answer was, raised eyebrows, my years inside Groucho's house. Uh -huh. It was written by this kid that got to work for Groucho towards the end, and there's this crazy woman and, it, and it's like, wow, and my name is spelled right. This is, I'm stunned. So I put out the, uh, still not thinking in terms of movies, just like, wow, this famous. So I put out on Facebook asking if anyone had any connection to him and heard back from someone who knew someone that used to play with his band. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I kind of sent out a query and I get an email back from Rob that said, hey, I understand you were looking for me, uh, hit me again. Sort of like a, a, a hipper version of Cabot's write again and I'll answer again and better. <laughs> um, and so we started back and forth and he said, have you ever thought of making this into a movie? Mm -hmm. Because I think it would be a great one and I'm looking to get away from horror uh -huh. and I bet I could get this done in mm -hmm. no time and I thought uh, I don't I haven't signed anything I mean it was really uh, just before things were finalized with this uh, and I said actually no uh, I have thought about it and I've written an adaptation mm. that was that was another thing that took you know for the people that said I like your book but I don't see how it's a movie it I thought initially I'll be happy to sell the rights to some skilled writer who will turn it into a movie. Right. But then I realized, no, I really would like to do this myself. Mm -hmm. So I sort of shimmied up the tree with a saw and hacked off all the limbs that weren't part of the movie. Mm -hmm. It's like, let, I want you to see how it's a movie. So never mind this stuff and this stuff and this stuff. So then I, you know, there's a lot more to adapting a book than just changing the margins and retyping the thing. Really? I had no idea. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hop up on my knee, little Johnny, and I'll tell you. <laughs> um, it, it, it's, you know, you have to think in terms of this is a different creature entirely. You're not, it's not a documentary. You're not slavishly attached to the sequence of events. As a, and so... Rob said, would it be all right if I read it? Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, fine. So I emailed him the script. He said, it's going to take me a couple days. And a couple hours later, he emailed me back and said, this is fucking fantastic. The changes I want to make, you could make in two minutes. Let's do this. Uh -huh. And I thought, hot ziggity. <laughs> and that led to a very interesting partnership. I mean, we were the strangest 
Hollywood couple since uh, mm -hmm. Ernest Borgnine proposed to Ethel Merman, I suppose. <laughs> because, you know, he's long hair and all these tattoos and, and the wild stuff. I, I loved going to his shows. I really ended up getting into the music more than I thought I would. Oh, wow. And, and we never... It, the thing is, uh -huh. you know, he really was sold short in terms of... It's very easy to get typecast, and I yes. ran into it in television. It's like, well, you've written 30-minute things and 60-minute things, but this is a 45-minute thing, so we have no reason to believe you'll be able to, you know. And so that's, so, you know, and I even penned an op-ed for The Hollywood Reporter about all of the mainstream directors who started in horror, all the guys from Corman, mm -hmm. and then I ended up with mentioning Robert Wise, whose first film was Curse of the Cat People, and then he ended up with West Side Story and Sound of Music. So it's like, please don't assume that all someone has done is all they're capable of. Because mm -hmm. again, Lord knows I have encountered that. You've written this stuff, so that's what you do? Well, it's among the things I could do. Well, mm -hmm. we, we don't want to take a risk. So uh, Rob is the one who got it to Cold Iron, mm -hmm. and they optioned it. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to assemble the elements of it. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately what happened was, even despite my op-ed in The Hollywood Reporter, big name performers and money people mm -hmm. were squeamish about trusting a mainstream film with, quote, a horror guy. Mm -hmm. And it's like we had to face the fact that continuing year after year to try to get past that mm -hmm. was not productive. Mm -hmm. And so there was a parting of ways between the production company and Rob. Rob and I are still on good, you know, there was no, it wasn't hard feelings and he and I still email each I, other. I've heard he's a great guy. He is a great guy. Yeah. He's a great guy and we, you know, people said, oh God, I'm so glad it's not going to be Rob Zombie because God knows. And it's like, no, you don't understand. He wasn't going to make it a blood fest. He wasn't going to make it a horror movie. Uh -huh. he, it was going to be based on the script that I wrote of my book, of my story. He got it. He yeah. cared about it. Um, that said, I considered myself very fortunate with where it has gone now. And my concern when I heard that he had left was, oh no, he was like my big brother sticking up for me mm -hmm. to keep you know, the suits from turning this into something that doesn't resemble it. Now, who is going to go to bat for me? Mm -hmm. and in, but in fact, the new director also has respect for my input and love for the for the material mm -hmm. and doesn't want to turn it into something completely different. So my fears were unfounded that even though Rob left the project, as often happens in movies, and mm -hmm. casting comes and goes and who's directing it comes and goes, um, uh, I'm really happy with the people who are involved with it now and have been treated real square. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see how it turns out.